What's up guys? Today we're playing Epic 7 and we're going to be doing Light Expedition. This fight isn't very difficult, but you do have to bring very specialized heroes and they might be heroes that you don't have or you haven't built yet. So today we're going to break down the expedition, what heroes that you can use and how to gear them out. Let's go ahead and we're going to get started. Let's take a look at why you would even do Expedition. It seems like a hassle, but everyone needs something that's going to be on this rewards list. You get a ton of different charms. You get different things to enhance your gear by reforging. You also get a lot of these conversion chests, which you are going to need for endgame gear. There's Molagora, there's modification gems, and then if we get to the very end, we also see that we're going to get gold stones, which is going to help you get Moonlight Heroes. Everyone needs this gear. Most of you are not going to have enough reforged materials in order to reforge all of your gear. And you know, we really only want to reforge gear that's really great, that's meeting a gear score of 55 or more. So be selective and that will help you here. But if you are just finding that you cannot reforge your gear, feel free to buy the premium pass and that will give you all of these extra rewards every single month in these different sections. Now let's take a moment and talk about the light boss. For immunity, they're going to be very similar to the other expeditions. You cannot uh, increase their school cooldown, you can't use things like Daydream Joker, and they're immune to silence, stun, provoke, and that kind of thing. You can bring other debuffs, this is going to be things like blind, attack down, defense down, unbuffable, that's going to be really crucial to this fight. So don't be afraid to stack up a lot of debuffs on this target. Onto the passive abilities, you cannot bring a dark elemental hero or they're going to get blasted. Another thing is that we have isolation and seal. You might recognize seal from things like Arceum and Mercedes. This means that any hero that you use cannot use their passive ability. You can still bring them, but their kit is going to be a little bit hampered because that passive is not going to trigger. We also have Isolation. This means that anything that your hero does only affects them. Any buff, any healing, any combat readiness is only going to affect them. Now this means that we can't bring a healer because they're not going to be effective. But they do help you out a little bit by adding Vampirism. This means that you're going to absorb some of that damage that you do and re refresh your HP. So you know, feel free to bring in damage based heroes feel free to bring in heroes with 100% uh, crit rate, and that's going to help them to stay alive. We can also get around this a little bit using an artifact, and we'll go ahead and talk about that in the future. One thing that the boss does, it grants himself increased defense every single turn. So this means that you have to bring someone in with unbuffable, also possibly someone that comes in and is able to do a, a buff removal or decrease the turn of a buff by one turn. So there's several heroes that we can bring for this, but any team that you bring in, you want to make sure that we're stacking up those debuffs, but we also bring in that buff removal that will help you do more damage, and it will also help you stay alive by allowing you to siphon off that HP through your Van Prism. So let's go in, we're going to look at our heroes, and we're going to talk about how we're going to build a team for this boss. The very first requirement for this fight is to have a knight in the front row. If you do not have a knight, the boss just hits way too hard and it cannot be a dark hero. Not only that, it must be a knight that can buff themselves on the first turn. So we have to have 200 speed and we have to have a very first turn with a buff. Now the best knight for this is going to be Fire Cecilia. She'll do an S3 She'll give herself immunity and barrier, and this means that the boss is not going to be able to hit you and do that extra extra damage and get that extra turn. Also with the boss, on their S2, they have something called surprise attack, which means that if they attack the front hero and they do not have a buff, they'll be granted an extra turn and they're going to do much more damage to you. I have her onto the exclusive equipment, which gives her decreased speed on her S2. We use this in a lot of different content. I use her for the fire expedition. 
I also use her for the Dark Expedition, so she's really great in this instance. What that means is that on the second turn, you'll be able to decrease attack and speed, so you're not getting hit as much. Also, you see here that it dispels one buff. So this is going to help you to remove that defense buff on the boss, which will help you then to do more damage and safe siphon off more HP through the Vamprism. The S1, 50% chance to reduce the defense of the target for two turns, which is really great because we can bring in multiple heroes that now have defense break. With multiple heroes, you're more likely to land it if it gets resisted, and because this is two turns, it relieves a lot of the pressure to constantly have to land that defense break. What you want out of her is enough defense and HP to survive. You also want 200 speed, that way you get a turn before the boss gets a turn, and then everything after that should be fine. At least 85% effectiveness will make sure that you land those debuffs onto the boss when it's your turn. She's on a very basic build. I even have her on to non-reforge gear. She's a very easy hero to build, and I recommend her for a lot of this PvE content, especially when you're going in and you're talking about expeditions. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to bring in a utility hero. And for this, I have Cerise. This is the most common method people are using. I also use in this video Green Azaria, and she worked out as well. Not quite as well as Cerise did, but pretty good. And I hit a million with both, so I'll show both of those fights. Now what Cerise brings is she brings decreased buff duration by one turn. This means that she's going to be able to remove the defense buff on the boss and help you to do more damage. She also gives you decreased speed. And this overlaps with your Cecilia. So if you can keep decreased speed on the boss, you're going to lap and you're going to do much more damage over time because you're getting more turns. She does give herself invincibility, which helps her survive a little bit, which was the one downside that I found to Azaria. Now, if you give her 100% crit chance, you don't have to worry about her not surviving and you'll do a little bit of damage. So improving these stats will help you out quite a lot. Ideally, what you would want is for her to go second on your team. That way, when uh, Cecilia goes and the defense buff comes up, that she'll just remove it right away. I have her going first. That did not harm me, so don't worry about the turn order as much. But you want to make sure that she goes before the boss that way she can apply this speed reduction. Again, 85% effectiveness will ensure that you're always landing debuffs on the boss, and it'll be good. She cycles pretty fast. She brings unable to be buffed, which means that you're going to be able to uh, block that defense buff in the future, and then hopefully you'll do more damage. She also brings a random dual attack. Now, because we are bringing a knight with two damage dealers, it is possible that she triggers this from the night and you won't do quite as much damage, but you'll have a chance to land that defense uh, break, which is also a good uh, thing to have on your dual attack. If she brings one of your damage dealers, then she's going to do even more damage. For the artifact, you can bring her on a couple of different artifacts. You can bring her on Miss Confile, which means she has an extra chance of defense break, which is good. Or you can bring her onto Song of Stars, and that will give you a chance to do target debuff, which will give you more damage as well. I also tried this with alternative accessories in case you don't have this limited hero, and I found Azaria to be really good as well. What we want out of her are basically the same things. We want her to be above 200 speed, and we want her to have at least 85% effectiveness. If you bring her crit chance up to 100, then you won't have a problem with her surviving. I'm using her onto Infinity Basket, that way she brings some dual attack chances and that will increase your damage a little bit. You can also run her on Sagan Stars and that will be great as well. What we want is for her to be able to decrease defense and do the unable to be buffed. This is really going to help block that defense buff and you'll do more damage. Also she resets the skills of an ally. Now what I have found for this is it does work. So even though you have the isolation, you're still able to reset the skills of your ally using this S2, and she will use it. What I have found is that she primarily uses it onto the knight hero, 
which means that you're able to constantly uh, refresh those debuffs on the boss, but she'll also use it on other heroes as well. You know, it seems to be random, but I found that she uses it on Cecilia the most. We have a, a decreased defense chance, 50% under S1, which is going to be really great, and it's going to enable you to run a different artifact than it would be someone like Cerise, who doesn't bring in a defense break. Azaria has it on her S1 and S3, so we can bring in, you know, Song of Stars, and that's going to help you to do more damage as well, as long as she can survive. You might have to, you know, change her, her stats a little bit to help her survive, increase crit chance, maybe give her some more defense, make her a more well-rounded character. As you can see, she's just using leftover gear, but she still worked really well in this case. And our main damage dealer today is going to be Sermia. You can run different heroes in this instance, as long as they can do pretty decent damage Typically, they're going to be single target attacks. I've run Euphine. I've also run Mercenary Helga. And we're going to bring in another single target damage dealer as well as our utility hero. Now, for this, I'm running the Rage Set. On Rage Set, you're going to do much more damage to the boss. And that's really what the problem is onto the light boss. Because you can't do things like increase your combat readiness, because you're isolated to just that one hero, then it becomes a problem of how much damage you can do with just your heroes as they are. I'm using her onto the exclusive equipment for the S1. This gives her a chance to do an extra attack and that will increase your damage. But there is some RNG and it's only 25%. This is a exclusive equipment to use in Hall of Trials a lot to do really good damage. If you were using her on PvP, I think that it'll still work. Typically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do the number 3 for PvP. That way you can continue to cycle her and continue to blast targets. But she's not as usable as she used to be, so now I have her onto this expedition. She's using her own artifact for Border Coin. I find that this is not an amazing artifact for her at this level of speed. That's because she doesn't build up 3 stacks until the boss is almost dead. So a different artifact I think would work better here. Something like a portrait or even a single target artifact like Glutton I think is going to do a lot better for you. Now what we want out of her is going to be general damage stats. We want to make sure that we have attack and crit damage. She does not need effectiveness but that's just how this gear uh, was made you know, for someone else and I didn't reforge it for this. She also wants a decent amount of crit damage. If you can get her speed up a little bit, Border Coin will be a lot more effective because it's going to enable you to cycle faster and build up those three stacks. Again, you can bring in a lot of different single target heroes, but this is the hero that I built for, uh, for Gollum when I was doing that video, and so I used her again here, and she worked out great. And our last hero is going to be Zila Carmen Rose. She's going to act as secondary DPS and also utility. She brings a ton to this fight, and I definitely recommend using her. I used her in Dagger Sakaar, I used her in a lot of content, and she works really well. Now what you want is ideally if you bring her onto a rage set, then she'll do a lot more damage. Uh, but for me, I don't have a secondary rage set to give her, so this is what I could come up with. General damage stats with at least 85% effectiveness once sure you land all of those debuffs. She brings in a dispel, I cannot be buffed, and she buffs herself, which is really nice for that extra amount of damage. She also brings in a decreased speed and a speed buff for herself, which is nice. Her S1 doesn't have anything, but it gives her a little bit more healing, so she's ensured that she will not die. I have her onto Kaladra Artifact, which also will stack with your raid set. So this will make sure that you can use her as your primary damage dealer, if you put that rage set onto her. Just like with our Sermia, you could add in a, a penetration set here, or maybe even a torrent set, and she'll do more damage. So you can improve these sets by adding in the penetration or the torrent uh, to you know just put you over the top, make sure you're doing a lot more damage, and it's going to work out really well. Because she's a mage, she also has the opportunity to come down and to use Bloody Rose. 
Now what this is going to do, it's just going to give you effectiveness, which means that your gear doesn't have to have as much effectiveness on it, but it gives you Vampiric Touch. This is going to stack with the Vamp Prison that's already on the boss, and you will never die as long as you have uh, those two things together. One, the boss gives you, and then this uh, debuff as well that you can apply through the artifact. So if you're finding that you just can't live, if you're not doing enough damage and your heroes are dying, come in, consider Bloody Rose, and I think that's going to work really well. Overall, she's an amazing hero. I didn't think that I would like her, but I definitely do not regret building her because she's useful in so much content, and the hero design overall looks amazing. I really wish they would come in and do the rest of the Banshees, so looking forward to those in the future. But for some reason, Smilegate, stop dragging your feet. Come on, let's get it done. This can't be held. This is going to hurt. You'll be destroyed. Why don't you beg for forgiveness? Oh, wait, it's already too late. No mercy in a real fight. Give up now. Grant me the strength to destroy evil. I'll destroy you. Assist me. Yes. of losing. Break through. Help. I'm coming. This is why you should have listened to me. You owe me one now. Enough. I'll blow you away. I didn't want to have to do this. But it seems I have no choice! destroyed why don't you beg for forgiveness oh wait it's already too late help i got this lance of steel this can't be helped this is going to hurt Keep watching, everyone! There is no mercy in a real fight! Give up now! This 
Disappear, evil one. Sorry. But I have no intention of losing. There's no escape! I pledge myself. You'll be destroyed. This is why you should have listened to me. I will break through. You can't run from me! Over here. Here I go. There is no mercy. In a real fight! In full bloom. The Sword of Flowers. Why? You should have listened to me. Grant me the strength to destroy evil. Forever. I pledge myself. Destroyed. You can't run from me. Do you hear me? I got this. Enough. I'll blow you away. Lance of steel. Pledge myself. I'll destroy you. I'll be me.
light expedition can be a challenging fight. Some of these heroes you might not have built before, and some of them might need to have your gear switched around a little bit in order to do it, but it's definitely worth it. What they've done is they've added the reforged materials for your Katie's uh, hunt into the light expedition. You can also come in and you can get the reforged materials for your conversion gems and you have modification gems as well. So this is something that will be a very good asset to you as you go through and you dedicate some resources to doing the Katie's hunt. Even if it's just to do it one time, unlock open recruitment and then let your open recruitment team fight for you instead of you going in and trying to do a million each one. This team can be improved upon with more gear, with more specialized gear, or adding an additional sets for damage. But what I really wanted to show you here was what you could accomplish just using things that you might already have. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Give me a like if uh, this video helped you so that other people just like you can find it as well. Until next time, happy hunting and good luck on your battles.